just in the car going to look at the land at Lim. It's been quite wet for getting on up there. Though we put some drains in, it's still not really recovered the land and we couldn't get on with some grass weed control on the OSR up there. So we're worried that the OSR is not going to make it to the spring. Just with Paul now looking at this OSR. Some, it's quite small, look. But it's still quite waterlogged, this field. So there's places where it's very, very thin. Still some little plants there. Put it in because we thought it's either a cover crop or it'll be a crop of rape. Looks like it's just going to be a cover crop. This is the best bit. This is where we put this drain in through this huge flood last year with the fence and the soil so fertile because nothing's grown in it for years. But it's had all the years of duck poo on it and everything else. So, and it's really good structure because it's all dried and cracked. The OSR is mint here, but as soon as you go up the hill on the ground, it's just a bit sticky and horrible. It kind of dies off. It'd probably been all right if it could have put its roots down if we'd have got it in a few weeks earlier. But we're going to look at maybe putting maize on it because then when it's dry enough in the spring, we could put that on. So it's just whether we do it for forage and cut it with a forage harvester or we do it for grain and combine it. I'm not just sure whether anyone's ever combined maize with one of our headers though. Andrew thought it'd be a good idea to put the brush on the little case and then it's, we can just like leave it on it every time we need it. But um, the brush has got wheels though, hasn't it? Take the wheels off and then just steer on the accelerator and you get into the gap then. Really? Fill the wheels with water or find some weights for it, but even would that be enough? No, the 1455, it's not got a block, it's just a toolbox. Just stand on it a second, look at how much difference does that make? Let's have a look. Yeah, but with, with, can you steer with him on? Hold on. No. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't weigh a lot, obviously. Needs a John Deere weight block on the front. Yeah, one of them blocks would do, wouldn't it? It's a shame, isn't it? it doesn't look that heavy either, does it? Yeah, but don't forget, if that's full of like 200 kilos of slop, what, whatever you put on the front, you've took off again, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, it looks like it's a Merlot job. Just taking a digger down this track now. We um any awkward size logs or stumps that don't fit through the chipper. We have what we call a habitat pile in the woods. And um the beetles and everything just eat them in the worms. Anyway, he's just gonna go and tidy it up a bit better. We'll go down and have a look in a minute with the digger. I'm just gonna go shoot back the yard. The guy just called in that watches the videos. Does aircraft investigation, which is a pretty cool job. I'm gonna go and quickly speak to him. What a fascinating guy and a fascinating job he's got uh, investigating UK air uh, crashes. So, uh, really interesting story. Got Andrew's tractor on the back, sorry, our trailer on the back of Andrew's tractor. We're just gonna run some logs up in or shake logs to our beetle sanctuary. I'm gonna go just tip these out here now. Tom Pepperton. Look to the left and to the right. Go back a bit further, won't I? That clearing now. There we go. Yeah, there's the motorway there now. Before they built the motorway. This used to be a pond and then the motorway came through and then it's never had any water in now for like the last 25 years so it's just a hollow for the beetles and all sorts of insects come in there so it's all rotting and all different funguses and stuff
remember in school when you'd build like a hedgehog house or a habitat pile and you'd get like all the branches and you'd stack them all up or logs and stuff but we just do it on a bigger scale quite pleasant when the sun was out before now it's freezing but that has arrived so yesterday i ordered tape for the wheels nice narrow tape didn't realize the back wheels are different there's a bigger dish that would have done away with that would have been better with fatter tape yeah that turn the dial that will fit on there because the back's quite a big dish probably would have been better with like wider stuff what's going on now i don't really have the patience for doing little things like this so keep going there you go <laughs> little things eh Big job on here. Andrew's all excited. His new lights have arrived. He's there. Gonna be putting them on in a bit. Got one left to do now. Well, I've been pimping the wheels on this, putting that little stripe there. Ian has done the birthday bumper. You ready? Oh, am I doing it? All right. Big Dave P, Philip Bowser, is it? Dan Giebles, Griebles, 13. James Tipple, 38. Thomas Wallace, 13. Callum Tyrrell is 15. Elliot Pitchford is 17. Daniel Byard, is it? Is 12. Neil Cliff, 57. Joe Boylan and Graham Barton is 55. And we are now up to £24,258. Who thinks we need to get the par paramedic pup to come when we get to 25,000. If you think we do, leave a comment below. So happy birthday, everyone on it and anyone else whose birthday it is today. Andrew's started a 40, 55 up, as you can see from the smoke in the shed. So we're gonna put that on here. So I'm just gonna lift these link arms up and then we can, oh, he's actually took that pin out. See the other side he's not took out and then we can um, swap it over. Hopefully this will pick it up a bit easier. Right now, take two, bigger case. We're gonna lift it up. You see if it'll lift it. What's he doing? He's messing with the electrics. God, so is it lifting it? It's not got one. See if it lifts it first. Oh, that's all right. The front wheels are still on the floor. What happens when you pull a lever now then? Went the right way, that, yeah. Working, it don't go very fast though. Just go and try it on the yard. Now I think what he's not realized is, is you've got to go backwards with it. And it's not spinning very fast. The old tractors don't have the flow of the new ones. Doing a decent job, but it'd be better if it was going quicker. What he needs is a lower gear, so that he can give it more revs to get the hydraulics spinning quicker. And then the brush will go quicker, but the forward speed won't be that fast. Let's clean this stripe. That's better now he's in a lower gear. 
All right, Joe. This is sounds for cleaning the yard. I have actually got a couple of road sweepers, but the, there's three that we need to make one or two good ones out of, but we just don't have time to get them in the workshop and they're right pain to work on because they're so low and one of them's got a massive oil leak underneath it. So we'll do it one day. But the idea of having the road sweeper was every time someone spills chip on the yard, we could just nip up and down, sweep it up before it ends up down the grids and blocking them. And Andrew said if the little brush fitted on the fort, the 585, it'd be ideal for brushing up because it's so manoeuvrable. But obviously it won't pick it up, so we put it on that now. But it's nearly as quick to put it on the Merlot, really. We should just take the brackets off and leave it on the Merlot fittings and we can just hitch onto it quickly. Looks like it's going to be a good sunset. Anyway, Ben's here putting the new lights on Andrew's tractor. And apparently the original ones, are the 1800 lumens and the one he's putting on is 17, sorry, 7,200 lumens. So they're just going to do half them. And when it's dark, we're going to see the difference. So that, that's the original one. So what were they? Tw did you say 1800 lumens? Either 1800 or 2,500 lumens. And they're 7,600? 7,200. 7,200. Actual lumens. Actual lumens. The chips are rated at about 9,000 lumens, but what you actually get out of is 7,000. So we'll see what it looks like in a minute. Yeah, there's definitely more of a halo around the ones on the right than the ones on the left. Let's get your light meter out again then. Let's have a look. So that's... I get out of the shape, 200 and... 250-ish, there or thereabouts. On the left, which haven't been changed. Then go to the right. About 1,540. Is that like six times brighter? <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? It doesn't really show on this camera though, does it? We, because it's, the camera's always enhancing the light, you just spin it around. All right, Joe. <laughs> All right, Joe. I'm going to work with the welding mask. Well, you can just see it's bigger, bigger blobs one side than the other. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're able to see. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit bigger halo in it on the right to the left. Is that just one of them, yeah? No, I mean, like, put his hand over one of them. The phone just adjusts again. And then he's doing the other side, it's not really making any difference, is it? Anyway, that's about it for today. Andrew is still outside playing with his new lights. You know when a kid gets a torch and they just play with it all night until the batteries are flat? Well, that's kind of what Andrew's doing now with his new lights. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and I will see you all tomorrow.